Let's get into some art and politics with Banksy. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're going into part two of our field trip down to see Banksy in downtown Atlanta. Today's topic that we're going over is his politics, activism, and criticism. So let's start diving into it. Also, real quick, down in the description is where I got all the websites of where I've got all my information from. Uh, again, number one, I encourage you guys to go see any art exhibit that exists because I think seeing the artwork is a very profound thing uh, for all students and educators to do. We should get out there, we should support artists, seeing work and engaging in that discussion of how is this art, how is this creative endeavor helping everybody? Again, caveat for those that missed part one, click on the uh, little title card there, go see part one. Uh, but this is not an authorized exhibit that we know of. And also just to reiterate, taken from Banksy's website himself, Members of the public should be aware there's been a recent spate of Banksy exhibitions, none of which are consensual. They have been organized entirely without the artist's knowledge or involvement. Please treat them accordingly. So let's dive into his politics. First off, we're not doing heavy handed politics like a lot of the stuff going back and forth right now. We're going with the artist take why he does the stuff that he does we're getting into the mentality the psyche of that and that's all we're going to talk about banksy once characterized graffiti as a form of underclass revenge or guerrilla warfare that allows an individual to snatch away power territory and glory from a bigger and better equipped enemy banksy sees a social class component in this struggle remarking if you don't own a train company then you go and paint on one instead banksy's work has also been shown to desire a mock centralized power, hoping that their work will show the public that although power does exist and works against you, that power is not terribly efficient and it can and should be deceived. Banksy's works have dealt with various political and social themes, including anti-war, anti-consumerism, anti-fascism, anti-imperialism, anti-authoritarianism, anarchism, nihilism, and existentialism. Additionally, the components of the human condition that this works commonly critique are greed, poverty, hypocrisy, boredom, despair, absurdity, and alienation. Although Banksy's works usually rely on visual imagery and iconography, to put forth his message, Banksy has made several politically related comments in various books. While fastidiously describing his political nature, Banksy declared that sometimes I feel so sick at the state of the world, I can't even finish my second apple pie. That means something to me. I like apple pie. Banksy's works are also equipped or also critiqued the environmental impacts of big business. When speaking about his 2005 work, Show Me the Money, Banksy explained, the vandalized paintings reflect life as it is now. We don't live in a world like Constables, Hey Wayne anymore. And if you do, there's a probability a traveler's camp on the other side of the hill. The real damage done to our environment is not done by graffiti rioters, or, but by big business. Exactly the people who put gold framed pictures on, of landscapes on their walls and try and tell the rest of us how to behave. Show Me the Money reposes Claude Monet's bridge over pond of water lilies with the inclusion of two shopping carts and one in, in orange traffic cone. This painting later sold for seven and a half million dollars at Sotheby's contemporary evening auction in 2020. Other acts of philanthropy by Banksy. Banksy has donated a number of works to promote various causes, such as the civilian drone strike, which was sold in 2017 for two, 205,000 pounds to raise funds for the campaign against arms trade and reprieve. In 2018, the sculpture titled Dreamboat, which, ex which was exhibited in Dismaland in 2015, was raffled off to aid in NGO help refugees for a minimum donation of $2 for every guest of its weight at a pop-up close choose love shop in canterbury street the committed artist banksy the social revolutionary is a very committed artist so or art terrorist is a very uh, most of his artworks are striking and humorous at the same time he is in favor of freedom and justice and against war and famine and all scourges caused by man anti-capitalist and pro-freedom he often includes powerful provoking slogans in his artworks he loves making use of rats and monkeys, which often seem to be strongly human traits when he illustrates them. His rats are, for example, usually represented with evocative slogans in significant places. Among his other subjects, we usually find police officers, servicemen, old people, and children. 
These are, however, regularly associated with objects that are inconsistent, sometimes even absurd, depending on the context. However, there's also the paradox. Banksy's paradox is full of contradictions and surprises. Driven by, cal by casualness and a strong need to shock people, he does not limit his work to the usage of stencil and paint. If he has a message to convey, he will do it, he will do it by all possible means. Thus, he has imagined a multitude of strategies tr to transmit his different messages and illegality. In order to get a sense of renewal, Banksy tried sculpture, sl slightly by creating a murdered phone booth and developing an exhibition called Buy One, Get One, which was created two identical sculptures, one of which was purchased by the public, the other one given to the municipality. The artist has even repeatedly violated the law by going gradually to the bigger museums in New York, Paris, and London in order to show his artworks by himself. Thus, he managed to show his version of the Mona Lisa with a smiley face, a painting on stone representing a prehistoric man pushing a shopping cart, or his version of the tomato soup previously painted by Warhol. Some British organizations, however, want the artist's head. This is the case of Keep Britain Tidy, the campaign that they, that they do over there. Its main representative denounced the work of Banksy on the pretext that he simply glorifies the art of vandalism and encourages people to do the same. It is that they do not understand anything. The entire work of the artist is huge reflection on the world, a race of freedom of expression, so hard to find fully whatever one may think. He does not destroy private property. He embellishes it with his hopes, fears, goals, anxieties, and dreams. Awesome, guys. I hope that you got something wonderful out of the class today. I know we went a little more deep into the political aspects of the stuff that Banksy does, and it's a conversation that you know we can have, and I think that it's imperative that we keep in mind that all artists through decades and centuries of artwork have all done the exact same thing. There's a there's an artist in probably Caravaggio, Michelangelo. Caravaggio, Michelangelo, Bunicelli. One of them did a painting of a pope, and I'll put the picture up here. I, if, and which artist did it? I'll put it underneath. We're talking between the 14th and the 16th century. In this painting, we have a painting of the pope. The pope is to be the the Pope is the Holy See, the person who's in charge of the, of the Catholic faith and thousands of millions of parishioners around the world. But let's look at the way that the Pope has been painted. Typically, when you look at these older pieces of artwork, you see a person of high dignity with a shiny forehead. The shiny forehead is to be is to describe to us that they are a well thought person, that they have a lot of knowledge inside of their head. So it's the light inside that you actually physically see in the image. In this image, we see that the Pope Pope's cap is pulled all the way down almost to his eyebrows to show that there is nothing going on upstairs. The artist is showing the world that he thinks that this Pope is an idiot, that they don't know anything, and that they should be understood that they don't know anything. There's there's other cases throughout all of history. The, one of the best ones that I think was the painting of the Sistine in the Sistina, uh, Michelangelo's painting of the Last Judgment. There was an argument between him and a archbishop at the during this painting. In this painting, you have three tiers of the painting. On the top, you have heaven. In the middle, you have purgatory. In the bottom, you have hell. In the hell section, bottom right-hand corner, there is a demon who is holding somebody about to drag them into the depths of hell. It came to be known that that was one of the archbishops that Michelangelo had a dispute with. He had a fight with the man. And during the whole painting job, archbishop went to the Pope and says, you got to do something. I can't be in a painting for all of all of time because they're showing that the, I'm being dragged underneath. I'm being taken by the devil. The Pope had the best response. Pope says, I can protect your, I can save you in a painting, but I can't protect your soul from the devil himself. And to have the, your boss basically be like, you know what? The guy might have a point and just kind of, just kind of side, side him. Just like, you know what? I could, I could say something, but does that change the truth? Does it change the facts? It's such a nice dig at, at politics. That's what it was. It's politics. This is stories that I got from, I had a really creative art history professor in college and it was great and I love her to pieces. These are stories that she told us during class and I think they're great. And and to, to, to have that kind of essence there, I think it's an important thing. We have a free press, we have a free thinking society and it's important to keep that free thinking society out there. And if somebody has problems, that's fine. We have debate, we have discussion, we argue our opinions on things. And that's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have that, that class 
clash between what some, one per, what one group thinks is one thing and what another group thinks is another about which direction that should be done in, and it's all done from their opinion. I think that's an important thing to do. We always got to solidify with facts. Facts are facts. That does not change anything, and I think that's an important and healthy discussion to have. Before we get too far out into the politics and the weeds, pulling it back, let's let's go ahead and break this down for today's class. I still have part three coming up. We're going into Dismaland, which I personally love. I do enjoy Disney. I I've, I've got Disney Plus. I'm I, I send them my money on the monthly, but at the same time, there is something nice about seeing um, the glitch aerial gone and dis destroyed castle. There was there was some good bits there, so we'll go into that next time. Uh, so wrapping up class today, don't forget to uh, get the message out there to all of our students or friends. Pr spread the word, so don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there. I'm trying to educate as many people as we possibly can. Don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern today, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Until later, guys, I'll see you guys next class. Have a good one. I'll catch you guys later. Later, guys.